Thank you for the opportunity to testify today in behalf of National Congress of American Indians. As you know, we've testified many times before, particularly about the Tribal Law and Order Act and the need for that. And we join with the others from the previous panels and this panel in congratulating Congress once again for passing this and, and also the administration for the implementation thus far. Um, we're pleased um, and, and satisfied um, with the implementation and the outreach from the federal agencies, but of course we wouldn't, we'd be amiss if we didn't talk about some of our recommendations to improve um, as NCAI, as others sitting here in this panel, won't be satisfied until the crime rates just, um, um, the crime rates dropped significantly in Indian country and our communities have become more safe. I want to first start with the first area of our recommendations, and I have many more recommendations in my written testimony. I'm only going to focus on a couple of them. The first one is something that has already been talked about, which is the need for resources. And so not only do we have this need for resources that you hear about, which were resources that were needed even at the beginning of the implementation of the Tribal Law and Order Act that we knew were going to be there and the critical funding. But on top of that, we're, we're in a situation where we are concerned about the Budget Control Act of 2011, which would then take those already meager discretionary funds and have further cuts for Indian country. And so I want to let you know, I think st tribes across the country stand united to reminding Congress of our federal responsibility, our federal trust obligation and responsibility to fund these programs and particularly these programs that are um, critical to protecting our land, our resources, at which includes the safety of our citizenry. And so as we look at these cuts in the, under the, you know, the, the lens of the Budget Control Act, let us be reminded of that. Second, the violence against women issue, and, and I want to again thank this committee for the work that you have done, not only having the oversight hearing that you had in July, but also the um, proposed uh, uh, legislation that you, it's statutory changes that you've put forward, and of course we um, strongly support those efforts and hope that the committee will commit, continue those work to collaborate um, closely with the Senate Judiciary Committee and to be able to ensure that those legislative proposals actually get placed in the um, upcoming violence against women reauthorization. Um, and also, as you know, this past summer, the Department of Justice released their legislative proposal to ensure that um, Native women receive the same protections, um, equal and equal access to justice as other women in America. And we, of course, um, support DOJ's proposals and strongly su request your, um, uh, your support to include those um, or similar language in the violence against women reauthorization. And the third thing that I wanted to talk about is the, the land confusion issue, which is really the carceri versus Salazar, and I appreciate the questions that you asked previous panel, panelists about this um, issue. So the, the decision of the Supreme Court um, created a significant confusion and, and we've seen rising litigation over the status of reservation lands in Indian country. And while carceri only addressed the land into trust issue, there are further ne negative consequences if the IRA um, Act is not, um, is not clarified. And that is the legal foundation for most tribal constitutions and the jurisdictions what it serves. So then it would bring into question Native organizations providing services. It pre, um, brings in um, the status of land and those provisions of those services. And, um, and so it, as the way that we look at it, we're concerned that it's only a matter of time before somebody uses negatively the effect of safety on our reservations to um, to, to litigate or to find a way to get out of some of the, the jurisdictions of tribes, particularly around the reinforcement of Violence Against Women Act. And of course we know that that would then um, harm more, the, the greater number of victims, which are our children and our women um, in, in Indian country. Um, and so in summing up, in, in, uh, I want to, in the three areas, our funding, of course, violence against women amendments and the la land status of certain, s uncertainty are our three big things. But in conclusion, I just wanted to make one more comment, and that really is the declaration, declination rates that Senator Tester asked some questions about. And of course, that was the driving force behind the TLOA, was to be able to address those declination rates and to be able to um, really 
um, reduce those. And so we're urging the committee to continue your oversight role to be able to make sure that that report comes timely and that we're able to have that information so it can help us further address the critical needs of, in, uh, of improving the protection of our citizens within Indian country and, uh, and to be able to um, have those um, enforced um, representations that are ne necessary by the federal, our federal partners. So thank you very much for this op opportunity to testify.